Ah, Disgaea, a series with the reputation of being one of the most grind-heavy, and known for its absurdly high level cap and stat numbers. Going this far in Disgaea can seem extremely daunting, but that's what this video is for. I've personally 100%ed Disgaea 1 through 5, and a lot of that time was spent scouring random forums and other text guides and FAQs to find random bits of information, and that's no fun. So I thought I'd make one big comprehensive video guide to break down all the information I've learned and give you everything you need to 100% Disgaea PC. Now, just so we're all on the same page here, I'm going to spend some time going over the basics of Disgaea so you know exactly what I'm talking about when these things come up later. Now, obviously how to play and everything is covered in the in-game tutorial, but I'm going to be talking about all the different tools and mechanics you can use. Now, you'll have a main hub world, and within this hub world are a lot of different NPCs to talk to to access different tools. The first being the shop. Weapons, armor, and items can all be bought here. When you go into the shop, the selection of items are random. You can change the selection simply by exiting and re-entering the shop. The strength of these items are based on your customer rank, and it's a good idea to mention right now that every single type of item has their own rank associated with it. There are rank 1 through 40 items. The game never mentions this. In fact, none of the games I've played, 1 through 5, mention this at all, but this is most prevalent with weapons and armor, with each of the 40 ranks having their own weapon or armor piece associated with it. Rank 40 weapons are the absolute strongest, but you can only buy up to rank 38 items in the shop. I'll go over how to get stronger ones later. Now how do you increase your customer rank? Your maximum customer rank can be raised by spending hell in the shop, the in-game currency. How to increase your current customer rank is done through the dark assembly. Do not be confused by the Dark Assembly, because I sure was when I first played this game. All the Dark Assembly does is use mana, which is obtained by defeating enemies, to pass bills that give you certain effects. Each character gains their own mana, and it generally doesn't matter who you use to pass bills. One of these bills is, of course, to increase your current customer rank, among a ton of others that'll come up as we go on. You'll be using this a lot, but one other important bill is the Stronger Enemy Bill, which increases the level of all enemies. This can be increased 20 times and are easily reversible with another bill, the Weaker Enemies Bill. Always keep these in mind when you want to gain experience faster. Each character also has an assembly rank, which you can only raise by clearing special trials. These ranks affect how many bills you can pass, as well as how much influence you have. I should also mention that the process of passing a bill is entirely RNG, based on the funny little numbers you see here. Now I just mentioned influence. In addition to the mana cost, you also need your influence to be higher than the mana cost of the bill. If you don't have enough influence, try a couple more promotion exams. This is also kind of RNG. The higher your assembly rank is, the more of a range of influence you'll have. So you can try just exiting and re-entering the assembly multiple times until you have enough influence. If the majority of votes aren't in your favor, worry not. You can also beat up the opposing senators to pass your bill. Of course, in most instances, you have to be very strong to do this, so save it for later. You can also bribe senators by giving them items they want that'll sway their opinion more in your favor, but I found this was never very effective, and it's easier to just wait until you're stronger and fight for the vote. Through the Dark Assembly, you can also transmigrate. This should be saved for much later, but you can essentially start a character all the way back at level 1, and based on how strong they were before, their starting stats will increase, and therefore their stats will grow much quicker and surpass what they were before the transmigration as you level up again. Additionally, you can create characters in the Dark Assembly. These characters will be one of many classes, each with their own stat specialties and unique skills, so play around with them. There are two categories of classes, humanoids and monsters. The only real difference between them is that monsters can't lift and throw, and they can also only equip one type of weapon, the monster weapon. You can unlock monster classes by defeating them in the game, and you can unlock humanoid classes generally by having specific combinations of other humanoid classes at certain levels. Each class of generic characters has six different tiers of their own, each stronger than the last, and unlocked by having a character of a certain level of the tier below it. At some point, I highly recommend getting at least five mages, as they have the skill Braveheart, which buffs your attack. Now, I say 5 because each Braveheart buffs your attack by 20% and can stack 5 times, which is why in the description it says, 
up to 100%. This basically means you can just double your attack at any point, but it does gradually wear off every turn. The other unit that's basically required to create is the Majin unit, preferably tier 6. That's because this unit has the highest attack out of any of the others and also the highest stat growth. This is what we'll be using to squeeze out the most damage possible, which will be extremely important in the endgame. Now we have one other major thing to cover before we get into it, and that's the item world. You thought just getting an item was the end of it? Oh no my friend, the item world is where you make your items even stronger. Each item you have will have a rarity of 0 through 255, and a rarity type is based on that number. A rarity of 32 to 255 is a common item, whereas 8 to 31 is rare, and this is the only one that's really important. 0 through 7 is legendary. I mention this because the item world has you entering an item and clearing randomly generated floors. Each floor cleared raises the item's level by 1, and the rarity type of the item influences how many floors the item has. Common items have 30, rare items have 60, and legendary items have 100. So naturally, you'll want to level legendary items. That was probably a lot of information, but now we have the groundwork for your Disgaea journey. So let's start with the main story. Where can you grind really early on? Well, there are 14 different worlds in the main story. The first big grinding area is 5-3, or World 5 Level 3. Technically, 4-1 has XP 100% plus tiles, which you can grind on, so go for it if you want. But 5-3 is the big one. See, this game has a cool mechanic that I don't think it tells you about at all, where if you throw an enemy into another enemy, they'll actually combine into a stronger one. Normally, this is pretty risky, as it significantly strengthens the enemy. Their levels literally just add up together. But as you'll notice, this map is completely covered in invincibility tiles, meaning neither you nor the enemy can be damaged in any way on this. There is one singular tile that does not have this effect, so you can either throw the invincibility geo panel on this tile to remove it from all the others, or throw each enemy onto that tile one by one and defeat them. In this case, if you make a strong enemy and blockade it into that one tile that doesn't have invincibility, you can defeat it with zero risk of doing any damage to you making it a safe way to defeat enemies much stronger than you and gain a lot of experience. It's a bit tedious, but definitely worth it, especially with stronger enemy builds. Another similar map is 10-1. Blockade the enemies onto these bridges that don't have invincibility tiles and have at them. It's a little bit more tricky since the tiles also have no lifting on them, but you can definitely make do. 12-3 is another map I had some success grinding on, although it's pretty tedious. I only did it a few times. You have to get rid of the 20% ally damage symbol, stay on the invincibility tiles, combine the enemies, and defeat them when they're not on the invincibility tiles. However, when it comes to the main story, 14-1 is the absolute best map to grind on. Upon revisiting, the map has 4 Nosferatu demons with XP 100% plus tiles on it. Now, this doesn't seem like a lot, but you can get some serious mileage out of this map. I personally was able to get characters up to level 300 using this map with stronger enemy builds, and to put that into perspective, the final boss of the main story is level 90. Speaking of the final boss, I recommend that you don't save over your current game file after beating it because you'll be forced to start a new cycle, which essentially means starting the story over. You'll keep all of your levels and items and everything, but you'll have to unlock a lot of maps again. Once you have your very overpowered characters at the end of the main story, you'll be ready for post-game content. This is most of the game. Actually, pretty much all of the game. The main story of Disgaea games is only a small fraction of what there is to do. So, what's next? Well, there's a set of maps you can unlock known as the Cave of Ordeals, and this is where you'll be grinding for the rest of your Disgaea PC experience. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's go over some ways to get stronger besides just gaining levels that may be relevant at this point. Some simple ways of increasing damage output include Weapon Mastery and Skill Mastery. See, for every weapon, each character has a specific affinity with it, and the higher the rank of that affinity is, the more weapon experience they'll gain when using that certain weapon. Each level of Weapon Mastery gives you a little bit of a damage increase for that weapon, with the max being level 255. Skills work in pretty much the same way, the more you use a skill, the more it levels up, and its damage increases, but there's also an increase in SP cost as a skill levels up. Now there are actually ways to increase the amount of weapon XP you get, as well as regular XP, and this is where we get into Item Residence. Items randomly come with residence, and each type of resident has a different effect. Stronger items will generally have higher level residence. Once you find an item with a resident you want in it, you can go into the item world, and each floor will have a chance of a resident from the item spawning. This will be a neutral unit, and the game will alert you when it happens. Kill the resident before the enemies do, and you'll subdue it. 
When a resident is subdued, the level of the resident doubles, and you're able to transfer that resident to other items, as well as combine it with residents of the same type. This means you need to keep finding items with the resident you want, subdue that resident in the item world, and combine them all together. Statisticians are one of the most important residents. Statisticians increase the amount of experience you gain from defeating enemies. In the case of statisticians, the increase is 1% per level, which is effective up to 300, so a 300% XP boost for level 300 statistician. You can technically get statisticians of higher levels, but they won't do anything for you. 300% is the soft cap. In addition to statisticians, other very important residents include arms masters, which have a cap of not 300, but 1900. This is because arms masters increase the weapon experience you get, which levels up your weapon mastery faster, and it takes a lot of experience to max out your weapon mastery, so a 1900% increase will help you do this a lot less painfully. As mentioned before, the higher a character's weapon mastery is, the more damage they deal with that weapon, so it's a simple way to significantly increase damage output. And trust me, you'll want to dish out as much damage as you possibly can. As a reminder, you can also gain skill experience, but there aren't any residents who will help you earn this faster, unfortunately, so just raise this level up to the point where you just can't take grinding in anymore. A little tip for grinding both skill and weapon experience is to go on a map with a lot of invincibility tiles, like 5-3, make sure only one enemy is left by either combining them or defeating all the others, and just continuously spam your skills, or normal attacks if you're just going for weapon experience. Because of the invincibility tiles, there's no danger of either unit dying unless you want them to. It's here that I should also mention gladiators. See, there are residents associated with each of your stats, and gladiators are the attack residents. The max stack of gladiators you can have is a whopping 19,998, and there's no limit to the effect of these residents, meaning you can have as many stacks as you can fit on your items and get the benefit of all of them. The thing is though, getting this many gladiators is insanely tedious, and each gladiator corresponds to one single additional stat point. This means that one full stack will give you almost 20,000 more attack, which really isn't that much when your attack will easily be in the 2 millions. I mention it, however, because I never dealt with gladiators when 100%ing this game, but I barely squeaked out that last achievement for dealing 10 million damage in one hit. Even while writing this script, I'm having a hard time replicating it. So I'm putting it out there if you want to spend the time grinding for gladiators. You can find good ones in axes and belts in the shop. You can farm residents really whenever, so if you want to get those bonuses as early as possible, go for it. I mention them here because this is around the time where you could probably get those if you really wanted to. Stronger items will have more difficult item worlds though, so it's up to you if you want to try farming residents early and having it take a bit longer, or wait until you're leveled up more so you can get higher leveled residents from stronger items. And with residents out of the way, we go back to Cave of Ordeals. This is unlocked through a Dark Assembly build that becomes available at Assembly Rank 6. Cave of Ordeals has 5 maps, but the third is the real gem. Upon revisiting it, it has 9 enemies in a 3x3 formation. Not only do these types of enemies give the most experience in the game, they're also standing on EXP 100% plus tiles, making this the second best grinding spot in the whole game. The only annoying thing is that these types of enemies have extremely high defense and resistance, meaning you have to be pretty strong to be able to take them out in one turn. Just make sure you're leveled up enough and that you're using a sword with the Wing Slayer ability, which attacks in a 3x3 formation to defeat all the enemies in one fell swoop. This ability is exclusive to swords and is earned by raising your sword mastery to level 10. And again, if you're having difficulty one-shotting these enemies, you can always buff your attack with Braveheart. Now, I say second best grinding spot in the game because after completing all Cave of Ordeals maps, you'll unlock the Demon Hall Mirror. This map is unique in that there are actually eight different maps here. The map will change every time you complete it, and after seven predetermined maps, you'll be faced with the same eighth map every time you enter it afterwards. And this last Demon Hall Mirror map is the best grinding spot in the game. Again, just wing slayer the hell out of it. Now, when it comes to stronger items, I mentioned that you can only gain up to rank 38 items in the shop. So how do you get rank 39 and 40 items? More RNG! That's right, you can find enemies equipped with rank 39 items in the item world. You'll know what rank it is by... nothing. Like I said, the game never makes any mention of this, so you have to look up an item chart online. I'll have a good one linked in the description. You can also find rank 39 items in the bonus gauge. The bonus gauge is present in every map and is a randomized set of rewards you get based on the combo you've built up in the map. Basically, the more you whack enemies, the higher the bonus gauge goes. Easy ways of filling the bonus gauge include clearing geo panel tiles and building large combos by having your units all attack the same enemy in one execution. But just finding a rank 39 item isn't enough. No, you want that sweet rank 40 item, and for that, you need a legendary rank 39 item. Since rarity levels of items are random, and a legendary item only has a level of 0 through 7 out of 255, they're pretty rare. 
you just have to keep looking until you find the very specific rank 39 item you're looking for, which should be the same type as the rank 40 you're looking for. So if you want the rank 40 sword, the Yoshitsuna, and you will, you need a legendary type of the rank 39 sword, the Cosmic Blade. This is because you can only obtain rank 40 items by stealing them from the item god of a rank 39 item. The item god is the boss of floor 100 in the item world, hence why you need a legendary rank 39 item. The item god will always have the next rank equipped of whatever item you're in. So in the Cosmic Blade, he'll be holding the Yoshitsuna. To steal items, you need hands, which can be bought at the shop. Use a hand, steal the items, and complete the floor. Note that if you're in a rank 40 item, the item god, or the item god 2 in a rank 40 item's case, will have the same rank 40 item equipped, making it a way to collect multiple of the same rank 40 item. I highly recommend that you use a Gensi to exit the item world at floor 99 and save your game, so you can immediately do over floor 100 if you need to. The reason you want a Gensi on floor 99 as opposed to 100 is that if you Gensi out at floor 100, the item god will no longer be holding the desired item when you go back in. Another thing to note is that rank 40 items will always be legendary, but you should still pay attention to its rarity level, because you'll actually get a 10% bonus to your stats for every item equipped that has the same exact rarity level, up to a 30% bonus, aka you need all of your items to be the same rarity. I've seen a lot of people recommend having rarity 0 items, but it really doesn't matter as long as all the values match. I'd recommend going for these super strong items last, as the item god 2 of a rank 40 item is about level 6 to 7000 and has extremely high stats. The good thing about stealing items with hands is that it's not really based on stats, it's more based on level, so if you're matching the item god's level or above it, then you'll have a pretty good shot at stealing his items, as long as you do it from behind. As an aside, your chances of stealing items from enemies is always capped at 50%, with the exception of thieves. Thieves are the only class that can have a 99% chance of stealing items, but I honestly never bothered to do this and I got by just fine, so it's up to you whether you want to level up a thief to use or not. When leveling these items, all that's required for the best stats is to clear all 100 floors, doesn't matter if you kill all the enemies or not, so just go for the portal, and to kill all of the item bosses. One item boss will spawn on every floor that's a multiple of 10 in the item world, and you can identify them by looking at their class. Floors 30, 60, and 90 will have item kings, floor 100 will have the item god, and all other floors that are a multiple of 10 will have item generals. Killing these bosses gives you a boost to the stats earned from leveling up the item, and if all your resident slots are filled with a stat boosting resident, the bonus for killing these item bosses will be higher in that stat. It actually doesn't matter what level those stat specialists are as long as all the slots are filled. You gain an extra slot for every item king defeated, so if you really want to, you can exit the item world after every item king and fill the extra slot with another stat resident before going back in for the absolute maximum stats. For your three additional items, I highly recommend that you put on three max level super robo suits, which is the rank 40 armor. This is because it has pretty high numbers for every single stat, not just defense. For your weapon, it's basically required that you use the Yoshitsuna, the rank 40 sword. This is because the Majin specializes in swords. And so, to recap. Clear the main story, invest in item residents, unlock and clear cave of ordeals, grind the hell out of it, find legendary rank 39 items, use them to steal the rank 40 items, level them up, reincarnate as needed, and you've got yourself a beast. Now you're ready to achievement hunt. There are a total of 30 achievements in Disgaea PC and you will have already gotten most of them through the course of grinding. For a quick overview, there are separate achievements for completing episodes 1, 5, 10, and 14 of the main story. There are also achievements for reaching levels 1000 and 5000, as well as one for having your total number of levels across all characters over 10,000. Additionally, there are achievements for killing 100, 500, and 1000 total enemies. And remember how I mentioned the item bosses? Yeah, you'll get 4 achievements for that alone. One for killing an item general, one for an item king, one for an item god, and one for an item god 2, which is the item god of a rank 40 item. Another achievement requires you to earn 10 million hell at the end of one battle, which is easily achievable by completing Cave of Ordeals 3 or Demon Hall Mirror with enough stronger enemy builds. You'll see super bonus displayed in the hell count when you earn over 10 million. There's an achievement for completing Cave of Ordeals, one for dealing 100,000 damage in a single hit, one for earning a total of a million hell, and one for performing a transmigration. That's over half the achievements earned right there just through the course of getting stronger. Speaking of transmigrations, there's also an achievement for performing 10 transmigrations. This is a little more tedious as it only works for 10 on the same character, not your total for all characters. You may have automatically gotten it depending on how many times you bothered to transmigrate for your max level character, but I definitely did not. What I ended up doing was just taking a high level character, Laharl in my case, and just transmigrated over and over without leveling up at all just for the achievement, then reloaded my save so I didn't actually lose any stats on him for doing this. 
It's a bit of a pain because transmigrations require assembly rank of 3, and you lose all of your ranks upon transmigrating, so you'll need to complete 3 promotion exams before every single transmigration. There are two achievements for playing through Etna mode, which is an alternate story you can choose when you complete the game. I highly recommend saving in a different save file when you enter Etna mode. It only has 5 episodes, and there's an achievement for completing the first episode and the final episode. Keep in mind that the enemies are significantly stronger in this mode than in the normal game, going up to level 300, so make sure you're prepared for that. The Dream Hand is a legendary rank hand earned for every 10% of record completion. The records basically just keep track of every single item in the game, including all the different rarities, so the more items you've obtained, the more this record will be filled. I believe the important number is this collection percent number, so when that's high enough, you'll learn a Dream Hand upon talking to the... Save Shop, who keeps the records. I don't think that's very indicative of what the NPC does, but regardless, if you've come this far, you should definitely have at least 10% of the record completion. The Hyperdrive is a unique item in the game, and I mean that in the most literal sense. You're only allowed to have one of these per save file, and if you lose it, you don't get another chance to get it again, so don't screw it up. This is obtained by climbing through the entire item world of a rank 40 item, from floor 1 to floor 100, without ever exiting the item world and killing the item god too. Make sure you have space in your inventory because it'll automatically appear there upon completing the item world. If your inventory is full, it'll appear in the shop, so clear out some space and buy it. Again, if you manage to lose it at all, it's gone for good. As for what the hyperdrive actually does, is an equipable item with basically infinite speed. It lets you instantly move to anywhere on the map, which makes item world grinding a bit faster. I say a bit because for whatever godforsaken reason, you can't enter portals while you have the hyperdrive equipped meaning you have to move in front of the portal, unequip it, and wait an extra turn before going in. Honestly, I kind of only find this useful for immediately killing gatekeepers, which are the enemies standing on top of portals. Regardless, you now have the item, so do with it what you will. Now we get into the real meat of post-game, extra bosses. There's an achievement for defeating all of the extra bosses, but a lot of the bosses have their own achievements tied to them as well, so we'll be going over them first. There are 13 extra bosses in the game, and 4 of them are just the item bosses, which we've already covered. Other bosses with achievements include Priere and Marjali, both crossover characters. These are both unlocked through Dark Assembly bills. The first, where Priere is located, is the alternate Netherworld bill. This bill is available at Assembly rank 8, and Priere is level 2000, but this will be an absolute breeze if you've prepared for everything else. The Mysterious Seal bill will unlock the stages where you can fight Marjali. This bill is available at rank 9, and Morjali herself is level 2500, again, one-shotter. Defeating both Priere and Morjali are the only prerequisites for unlocking the stage to the strongest extra boss in the game, who of course has his own achievement. Tyrant Overlord Ball. This absolute unit is level 4000 and has some pretty high stats. One thing to note is that he has two special items on him, a Super Robo Suit and a Nemesis, which is a unique weapon. Both of these are giving him a lot of stats, so if you steal them, his stats will drop significantly. Either way though, he won't be able to touch you if you've been preparing properly. Contrary to popular belief, however, this is NOT the strongest super boss in the game. No, unlike other bosses, you can re-enter this stage and fight Ball again, but he won't be the same this time. He'll be Prinny Ball, which counts as its own separate entry in the extra boss list, and his stats are significantly higher. This time, if he uses a special skill on you, he can just straight up wipe you out, so you need to be careful. Pretty Ball, just like normal Ball, has some items on him that you can steal to actually stand a chance at surviving his special skills. Both of these are totally unique and can only be obtained by stealing them from Pretty Ball, but you can keep refighting him, which basically gives you access to however many you want. Remember to use buffs if you're struggling in a fight, particularly 5 Bravehearts. Get behind Pretty Ball and attack, and I usually use Knight's Ever because I'm pretty sure it's the strongest skill a sword has. Pretty Ball is likely to go for the weaker units on the map, so if you've sent out mages to cast Braveheart, he'll go for them first, so just keep attacking him while he's distracted and you've got it in the bag. It's now time to clean up the other extra bosses in the game. Compared to Pretty Ball, these are cake. Two of them are Adele and Rosalind, who should have already fought in map 6 and 7 of Demon Hall Mirror, which only leaves three more. One of these is the Prinny God, who can be found in a set of maps unlocked through the Dark Assembly called Prinny Land. There are three stages here, with the Prinny God being in the third. The next is Zeta, who's a crossover character from Makai Kingdom. You unlock this fight by passing all 20 stronger enemy bills, upon which the Dimension Guide will alert you that he's appeared in the Stellar Graveyard. Now, I don't know if this fight is replayable at all, as I started a new cycle and passed all of the bills, and he never appeared again. I even still had him in my party, which leads me to believe the fight probably can't be redone without starting a whole new save file. So, here's a video on YouTube. And now we come to the very last extra boss, which is General Carter. You can fight him in the human world, unlockable through... 
Take a wild guess. The reason we saved this one for last is because completing it actually leads to an alternate ending of the game, which will force you into a new cycle. And since the achievement requires every extra boss to be fought, as in having the record list completed on one save file, you'll have to start a new cycle and unlock everything again to continue, so I just recommend saving it for last. The EX Complete achievement will pop upon defeating him if all the other extra bosses in the record are there. And with that, we just have one more achievement to unlock. Now I've been hinting about this achievement throughout the video, and yes, this achievement requires that you deal 10 million damage in one strike. And to clarify immediately, if you have special skill animations on, each hit in the animation actually counts separately, so you'll need to have animation off for the full damage to count as one strike. You should already have everything you need for this, but it's still difficult to pull off, especially because there's some luck involved. Even if you don't do 10 million on your first attempt, if you're pretty close to it, keep trying. This is because damage output isn't exactly the same for every time you attack, which is part of the RNG. The strategy here is building up the highest combo you can before unleashing Night Sever and utilizing attack 100% plus tiles. You can try to find these in the item world, but I find them to be exceedingly rare. A better strategy is using Demon Hall Mirror Map 5, as it's the only map that naturally has these tiles. You can't go back to this map once you've completed it, so you'll have to enter a new cycle and unlock Demon Hall Mirror again by unlocking and completing Cave of Ordeals again. Then save before Map 5 and keep reloading until you pull off 10 million damage. I was actually pretty worried because, as I mentioned earlier, I was having difficulty replicating 10 million damage for this video as my attack was only at 2.1 million, which was a little below the recommended attack range that I saw in other guides. I have a screenshot from when I first pulled it off, but I must have gotten insanely lucky because I couldn't pull it off again for the life of me. What I ended up doing was leveling up Knights Evermore from level 15 to 23 and then it ended up working, so trust me, you have options. Another thing you can do is reincarnate again, but I remember from first playing this game that the stat boost becomes pretty minimal after a certain point, and it takes super long to get to max level again compared to future games, which is why I figured I'd just level up Knights Ever instead. What I personally did to do this again was use turn 1 to use all 5 Bravehearts, then end the turn, allowing the enemy to get closer. Then on the second turn, I'd use 2 more Bravehearts to get my attack buff back up to its max, and use 7 other units to attack the enemy before unleashing Knights Ever to get the highest combo I can. Once you finally pull this off, you've done it! You have successfully 100%ed Disgaea PC. I really hope this guide was helpful. I put a lot of time and effort into it, so if you liked it, be sure to do all that YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, yada yada. I'll most likely be uploading more guides in the future, as well as other kinds of videos centered around games I like, so be sure to stick around. And of course, if you have any lingering questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I'll see you in my next endeavor. Peace.